Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Cookbook Club. Now, what is The Cookbook Club? It is a once a week live show where we bring our favorite Bake Space members in to talk live to you. And also we have one special guest today, Kathy Hester, who is a, Kathy, do you do mostly vegan cookbooks? I do, I have five traditionally published vegan cookbooks and my new Halloween ebook. Ooh, that, that's what got my attention. That's why I was like, <laughs> Kathy, this is the show for you. If you're watching, uh, this is all about Halloween recipes, what to, some ideas, maybe some cocktails, maybe some appetizers, maybe some fun things that we find on the web. Uh, also, I've been getting a ton of emails. I'm sure you guys have too, where everyone is like, Halloween this, Halloween this, in like two weeks, it'll be done. But it's really exciting to see how creative everyone is. Also, we're gonna talk about what to do with leftover Halloween candy because if I, I don't know if you guys are like me, but we are like up to the wazoo in candy. After it is over, I do not want to see another piece of candy in my life. So hopefully uh, some of these recipes will be inspiration for what to do with that candy after the holiday is over. So I want to uh, introduce myself. My name is Babette Pepe. I am the founder of Bakespace.com. I am also one of the co-hosts of the Cookbook Club. In every episode, we create a community cookbook based on the topics the recipes um, that we feature, but also on the topic of the week. So this week is about Halloween. So if you have a great Halloween recipe, we're gonna post the link to our uh, cookbook page where you add a recipe. You don't have to join our site. You can if you want, you can join bakespace.com of course, but we're gonna make a community cookbook together and we will link to it on our blog and also on our website as well. So you can, if you wanna promote your blog or you wanna promote a recipe or a link, um, you can feel free to upload a recipe and um, hopefully our community will check it out. Uh, let me introduce my two co-hosts. Monica, let's start with you. Do you wanna tell the folks who you are and uh, a little bit about your uh, website? Okay, I am Monica, I am um, live in Alaska, I'm down and visiting my mom in Oregon right now, so it's kind of a little bit fuzzy. Um, I specialize in caramels and car cakes, um, any type of fun, colorful treat. So this Halloween episode is right up my alley and Halloween is my favorite holiday ever. I decorate a tree for Halloween and it stays up until February. So, <laughs> until you, decorated, you decorated a tree for Halloween. I decorated a tree for Halloween and until my husband says, uh, honey, it's about time. It stays up. But he has let me keep the orange lights above the kitchen cabinets and a orange and black garland with lights on it hanging from the loft. And now he just officially approved a um, paper art thing that I had made that's like huge. You can't, you can't see on the screen, but it's like huge. It's a big wreathy paper thing. And he even said that he, I could keep it up all year. But, you know, I think it's yeah. funny that you say he just approved because we yeah. all know you basically, you're like, Come on, don't you think? You're like, well, no, he cute. even said, I really like this and I'd like this up all year. And I'm like, you realize you have just now officially approved Halloween even <laughs> further. So, you know, the whole house is going to be it. But, anyways, um, I do all kinds of stuff. I do um, a lot of organic, I do a lot of foraging. So, you'll find all kinds of foraging recipes and different weird stuff on my page, just fun things. Um, I kind of like to freak people out by putting like, um, parsnips in macarons, you know, just several things like that that people don't expect a flavor to come through and then they find out they really like it. Um, all of my stuff, um, as far as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, is all the Moon Muse. So you can just find it that way. Excellent. So Danielle, who is Peaceful Cooking. Danielle, introduce yourself and then tell us where your Minnie Mouse outfit came from. <laughs> okay. I'm Danielle from Peaceful Cooking. Um, I don't specialize, well, I don't specialize in anything specific. I you know, do a lot of breads and things like that. But um, so whatever it is, it's challenging me that catches my eyes what I put on my blog. Um, I'm, I'm uh, am I in Big Space still as I'm stuffed or did we change it to peaceful? You are still I'm stuffed. I have not done that yet. But do you realize that your Wi-Fi is a little slow? Is it? It's not Wi-Fi. It's connected directly. So. Oh, see, now now it's caught up because it was okay. like, it was lagging a little bit. Um, okay, Anyways, so we'll, we'll watch that. We'll watch that. Watch that, watch that. But I just realized, too, I'm in Vlad here, it says I'm stuffed and I can't change it to, to peaceful cooking. But um, I'm in Los Angeles, Burbank specifically, and I'm dressed as Minnie Mouse, I guess, mainly because um, this dress I got for a vintage 
fundraiser that I just went to over the weekend and everybody told me I looked like Minnie Mouse. So I got the ears from my daughter and here I am. <laughs> I went with the witch. I figured that was the safe call. Yeah, and I realized I look like I have around here are baseball caps and it doesn't work for me. <laughs> Well, you look fantastic. Are you drinking anything? Oh, of course. Yeah. Wine. Wine? Um, probably a cab. And it's uh, Michelle Saint Chateau or something. Uh, oh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorites. I like that it, ha it has um, the little granules in there, the little unfiltered bits. Down at the bottom? Yeah. I've got half a glass of that and something else. We did a hangout with them, a Scharfenberger and their yeah. their vineyard hangout. It was delicious. It was some what of the best stuff. I want to go. Um, it's up north. It's up north. We should. Oh, road trip. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Save it till the next time I come down. Oh. When are you coming down next? Like next week? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? You could probably I'll just take me. Again. We can drive up and we'll meet there. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah, we'll just go again when I come down. Now, Kathy, where did you say you were out of? Durham, North Carolina. Oh, Dur okay, North Carolina. I was thinking you were n up north because I was going to say you could. Yeah, uh, Monica <laughs> could pick you up from Alaska on the way down. You guys <laughs> could meet us there. We could all be celebrating some wine and we'll have a good time. Now, Kathy um, Hester is our special guest today. Kathy wrote a an ebook about Halloween recipes that are for vegans, which I find fascinating Kathy because I when I always think because I'm a vegetarian and I always think oh man being a vegan would that make Halloween so difficult because of all the marshmallows and the candies and stuff like that um, what are some of the challenges well there can be some of that some of the Halloween candy is accidentally vegan and there's some lists that you can get and actually before we get off of here I'll try and find a list that I can put up as a link um, but like with marshmallows and things like that, and and honestly, I hate to say this, but marshmallows aren't vegan either, or vegetarian either. I know, I know. Okay, I know. and I, I, know. I hate to break people's hearts about that. I'm always I, like, oh. <laughs> and, and gelatin's kind of a, yeah, it's a sore know, subject with I me. Um, I but know. I've been meatless for what, 32 years or something like that, a long time. And so when I didn't know where gelatin came from for most of that time, and it was very shocking. And a friend of mine who doesn't care where it comes from gives me a hard time about my gelatin obsession. But, oh, um, that's terrible. I mean, I, I always say to each his own. So if, if it's how you believe and how you feel, I applaud anyone who believes in anything. Um, but she they, does it in a friendly, yeah. loving way, you know, <laughs> so um, just more of a picking on me but you can get there's two kinds of um, marshmallows that are widely available and one is dandies which is out of chicago and you can get those at any whole foods i think across the whole united states and now they they usually have the big ones and they've got the little mini ones and in my area they don't have them but they have pumpkin spice mini ones this year and i got to try them at vita vegan earlier this year and they were delicious is the Vita Vegan, is that in Chicago? Um, no, last year it was in Austin and that was its final oh. year. So we'll see if somebody picked oh. it up. Um, Cause that was basically a vegan blogger conference where a lot of the different vendors and things came. But, and that's, Dandy's is out of Chicago, but then there's Sweet and Sarah that's out in New York and you can mail order from them and they do some cute ghosts and chocolate dipped cats and really cute things. So I've actually ordered for them for my big Halloween party because we have a multi-course sit down dinner party every year. So we have a gothic, for Halloween. Yeah, a gothic dinner party. This is our 10th <laughs> year. No. So, <laughs> so on the other side, the house is already starting to be decorated. So I have actually a food blogger friend who's flying in from Houston just for the party. Okay, now I am so glad we reached out to you because <laughs> we were thinking about what we were going to share and some of the recipes and ideas. And as I was looking, I was a, I was a little overwhelmed on Twitter because it's like this pumpkin this, pumpkin that, blah blah blah, whatever. But you are, how do you even prepare? How do you like even? Because if you've been doing it for ten years, like how do you outdo yourself? And how do you how do you start to think about throwing a Halloween party? 
sometimes I just start to think about kind of what I'm into because, you know, as food bloggers, we kind of get into our groove for like whatever time. And like right now, um, I haven't decided what I'm making yet and I'm going away for a week before Halloween to make it more fun, but I'll probably make something with aquafaba, which is the new vegan thing, um, which is just chickpea water. You know, the water from a can of chickpeas that you pour down the drain. Ooh. Oh, that sounds not it's, good. <laughs> it, doesn't taste, it doesn't taste like it at all. You can make actual meringues. Yeah, I've seen that. It's beautiful. And, and so people are, I've actually made a sponge cake with that and it was so moist that I just used two tablespoons of it instead of like um, what you would use one egg or I would use a flax egg. And so it's kind of cool. So that, and I'm thinking of maybe trying to do some kind of weird RNG meringue something too. But I guess I always think over the years and I always look at all the blogs that I can to get some ideas too because I think for, for my book, too, I did 25 recipes for the Ghoulish Gourmet, which is the book that I did. And it kind of goes everything from dips and some appetizers to drinks and desserts and main courses and all that. So I guess I'm used to thinking about it because usually we have a, a few appetizers and a mousse bouche. We have a soup, a salad. Um, sometimes we have something in between. Then we have one to two main courses with different sides and two or three desserts. Now, would, would you say that your first course is like a cocktail that when people. Sh oh yeah. Sh how, how do you, how do you, how do you ho Halloweenify a cocktail? There are a couple of really, really good ways. And do you guys know that tonic water glows under black light? Yep. What? And no. that's, that's <laughs> number one. So if you don't know that all your friends will be amazed. So you can make any old boring cocktail. You can even make just like a vodka tonic, make a big, you know, clear glass jug of it and have a black light and it looks like the coolest thing ever. Wow, that's an awesome trip. And you can also get those little test tube looking things. I think they're everywhere this year. And you can put shots. Yeah. And you can put shots or I'm thinking this year of actually, because I have some people who are drinking and some people who are not. So I'm going to make some kind of... Um, Ra thick raspberry non-alcoholic kind of cordial to go along with the, I made a uh, homemade raspberry cordial. So I'm going to do some kind of cocktail with that this year. Here, this is how the, this is how the, um, the yeah. Test oh yeah. And the ones I had, had that, had like a really cool wire thing that it looked like it came with and it doesn't. So I don't know if those came with a little plastic thing. Mine are just tubes. Yeah, this this looks like it. Um, it comes with. It has like a little plastic thing. Let me just view all images. I, I've seen them do these at bars. This is kind of cool too. This has like a whole stand. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I like the rainbow. That's pretty cool. You know, what you could do. You could put like um, gummy worms or something in it. Like you at know, the bottom, so then it's like you know you're you're eating you know. <laughs> I did oh, um, I took vodka but, and I put like sour peach candies in there and it they dissolved and made the vodka taste like peach and made a uh, Halloween cocktail out of it. I just put the link up on the side here. Cool. And I'm just and putting a link up of something ice. else that dissolves. It was. Um, not vegan, but you can use your own marshmallow recipe, whatever your favorite marshmallow recipe is, and made um, Bailey's Ghosts. And you could make it with um, regular Bailey's, the leaded version, or you could use a non-dairy coffee creamer. And and then they float in the, the hot coffee or cocoa or whatever you put them in and then just kind of slowly melt. And so they're really fun. So I'm going to post a link for that right now. Oh, okay. Great. For first, first candy contest of the show. What do you guys, which one is better, Reese's or Almond Joy? Reese's. Reese's. Uh, I don't know. Neither I think they're both vegan. probably, <laughs> I know, neither one of them are vegan. That's but true. I would say Almond Joy just to be different. Oh, Almond Joy. Okay, <laughs> Reese's. Reese's. Reese's uh, what, when you eat them, when you eat oh. them, if you eat, if you love them. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to. Exactly. And Mama Cruz, thank you so much for tweeting out uh, the chat as well. Um, we really are. Um, we appreciate that because you've, you've been a long time uh, watcher. We got to get you on a show, Mama Caruso. 
we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to figure that out. Okay, so let's talk about okay. So for cocktails, you can do some of those shots. What about doing something? Because um, some some parts of the country in Los Angeles, we are like melting. It is so hot. So the shots and stuff are really cool. I love the idea of the glow in the dark cocktail with the um, the tonic. Um, but what about for the eastern part of the country that's starting to cool down now? Do you have anything that's kind of warm or anything that's kind of um, wintry? I do. I actually have a recipe for a fall syrup. And I, you can use it in either cold or hot cider with some spiced rum or bourbon. And that works really well. So I think, I don't know if I can show you this picture, if you can see it or not. Can you see? Nope. Nope. Something moved. That was me. <laughs> that looks okay. wonderful. Oh, that looks toasty. Now, do you think that the cups and stuff like make or break a cocktail? I, I totally do. And because we do this every year, we actually have built up sets of Halloween dishes. So this year I actually got a couple of new sets. Like, so I have some really big dishes and, but we probably have four or five different cocktail glasses that we've used over the year. Some of them, we've started out doing more of the plastic. And now that we know we're going to probably do this until we die, we're, gonna, we're upgrading every year. Now we're getting China and glasses. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people who want to like find Halloween stuff? Is it just buy right after the holiday and that's where you get all the good discounts? There's a lot of that. So if you don't have anything at all and you want to do it next year, that's a great way to go and make sure to hit up Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel, actually I've gotten some beautiful ceramic dishes that have bats and ravens and they were the same price as the plastic dishes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And they have these amazing giant cauldron soup bowls that we just got to set up this year, too. But I think if you have a budget and you want to do it next week, what you need to do is hit the thrift stores. Mm. And um, that's my first place, because the coolest thing is, is if you get a bunch of basically old lady dishes that don't match, it looks yeah. like a haunted house already. And you could do that with the <laughs> wine glasses. I was at the thrift store and I got all kinds of silver serving containers and trays and all these things very inexpensively. The, the next place I would go, it's a little late, but Home Goods and TJ Maxx usually have, especially Home Goods, a huge Halloween selection in September. Huh. So they're almost gone now. But if you go and look like, like actually these were just in the regular and I consider this more of a Halloween glass. Mm -hmm. And then for just like table decorations too, the thrift stores are great because you can paint anything black yep. or silver mm -hmm. or paint, you know, get a spray can with the texture on it and make stuff with, you know, just anything that you're not going to eat on. And so I do that a lot. I do you guys, one, oh, Halloween go ahead. Glass. one Halloween glass. <laughs> Oh yeah, I just saw oh, that on your side. Yeah, I don't know. Not is it a skull? Yeah, it is a skull. So, it's just you know, it's funny. It's As I'm getting older, my eyesight's getting worse. That I'm like, is that a skull yeah. or is that just? This camera wasn't focusing on it, so it didn't really work that well. Oh, that's where is it? Plastic? It is plastic. Um, that's good for when you're at the pool or in the bathtub. Right, right. Um, or the hot tub later. Yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> yeah, I had to resist picking up a new glass when my mom and I were shopping yesterday because it's glass and there's no way I'm gonna even chance getting it back home on the airlines. But it was so tempting. I should have bought it just for this. Right. Mm. <laughs> Next time when your mom says don't get it, you'll be like, you remember that time? So you know that time I could have used it. <laughs> now I'm drinking out of a juice glass. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monica, what is your what is your mom's name? Cindy. Boo, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was probably a mutual decision, you know. Boo, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> I need more Halloween stuff. We've had people like drop Halloween dishes off in front of our house and not even oh. say who they are, just boxes will magically show up with Halloween decorations because they know how much I like it and they'll just show up on the front porch and I'll put it out there with whoever and nobody ever owns up, but somebody trades their stuff in. 
Well, we have oh, to get to cool. know each other better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've got, I've got a favorite mug that has a little ghost on it, and it's this mug that I have to drink. I have to drink my coffee out of that every Sunday when I have coffee. Or my whole day goes wrong, but I need my Halloween mug. If my husband pours it into the wrong mug, I will pour it into the proper one. And yeah, because I have to drink it out of my Halloween mug. There's no other way. That's great. <laughs> now, okay, so you guys, we're, we're, at the, we're at the drinking stage. People come in. We're enjoying the party. Um, what do you, how, how do you start giving them the spice of the, the, um, the kind of, Hollow's Eve, or do you do an appetizer? Do you do something that's really disgusting? Do you do a, a centerpiece that like has brains and all that kind of weird stuff, or do you keep it classy? We try to keep it sort of classy. There's there's like a line, and so <laughs> it, I'm kind of a no kitty litter cake kind of person. So yeah. that that crosses the line for me. And and plus, I make everyone dress up, and if they don't, it says on the invitation very clearly. If they don't dress up, I will dress them how I see fit. <laughs> yeah. And I bought some costumes especially for that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> but I even let people, they can wear a tux or they can wear nice clothes. That So they have some sort of out. So just because everyone's dressed up, that already starts to set the atmosphere. And we keep the lights very, very low. We have lots of candles. We have those big trees, you know, that with the orange lights. We have like four or five of those and lamp posts. And Cheryl sometimes puts the, we have a giant blow up. Um, it looks like a castle entrance with gargoyles that go in, goes in front of the door. And we have, yeah, we have 15 bins of stuff. that we. What kind of music do you use? You know, it changes from year to year, and I'm kind of leaning towards more steampunk music because it seems like it kind of oh. gives you that atmosphere, but it's a little more upbeat. And so yeah. um, on Spotify, I found a couple of different um, steampunk channels. And all I suggest is that if you're going to have a mixed age audience to maybe listen to some of it or look through the playlist because I can't make any guarantees. Oh, <laughs> my lovely assistant, Cheryl brought the bowl. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. I love it. Oh, it really does look like a cauldron. And the bat dish. Oh, that's oh, cute. You can see on the back, nice. it's black. Yeah. It's a really nice dish. Yeah. Um, so, so we have every surface upstairs decorated. Um, and we usually have some appetizers, some dips, um, lots of eyeballs. So I kind of think, you know, did you guys see Portlandia when it was like put a bird on it? How no? Wow. Okay, but I love that show because you know how they have really you can find a bird on anything, a shirt, a book, or whatever, um, pocketbook. And so they did a skit about just put a bird on it, and they started marking up all the prices because they had a bird on it. <laughs> and Halloween is like you just need to put an eye on it. So it can be oh, any dip it. that you want. Like some of the things I will do, like a peppadou pepper, uh, a pickled onion, and then an olive slice on top. So if you think about building some height and different eyes, it really adds something to to even just like hummus. Yeah. So, oh, so you use like the the um, the olives, like sliced olives. So it kind of looks like a little eye. So because I'm thinking when I think eyeballs, I think actually like those gummy eyeballs or like the toy eyeballs. Like that. You could totally do that too. I'm. I'll see if I can find the picture in the book. Sorry, Monica uh, and Danielle. Do you guys do you guys uh, decorate your house with Halloween? I mean, uh, Monica, you said you do decorate with Halloween. Yeah, and, and, and another way to do something that you know, if you don't really have a lot. Uh, That's cool. Our place to do stuff. Oh yeah, that is cool. You um, just hang up black trash bags. I did that uh, <laughs> uh, years ago. Uh, had a little place. A single mom didn't have a lot of money, and I wanted to decorate it up. I just hung up black tra black trash bags, and just all over, you know, all the walls. You know, you can use that little tacky tack stuff, and you know, have them so when you're going down um, hallways, you know, opens up, and it just adds kind of a spooky thing and darkens everything in there. Super cheap, super easy. But yeah, we, we decorate. Let's see if I can find my phone here. But yeah, I, I decorate everything. And like I said, it stays up. And then I'm trying to find a picture of my phone. Danielle, go ahead and of my newest decoration, the one the husband approved. 
I used to when the kids were little, we got some styrofoam and cut them into the shapes of different um, tombstones and then wrote on there like my remains and, you know, Seymour Butts and stuff like that and put a wire in it and stuck it in the front yard and everything. But um, pumpkins, I used to really get into carving the pumpkins and get those um, patterns. Danielle, have you ever gone to Toluca Lake when they have like their... Yes. I, I took the kids there and they get, instead of the little tiny bite size candy bars, they get the king size candy bars. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Yeah, we, we have hope now, you know, all those. We have some family that live there. And so the last two Halloweens, we've gone there. The first Halloween, we were not prepared. We, this is like, they bust you people in. You can't park. You have to walk. To yeah. Away. Yeah. We had to do that too, just to get to our family's house. And the first week, I, the first year, I was like, "Oh, this will be very interesting." And I'm like, "Where are all these people coming from?" And then the second year, it was like we had all prepared. Like mentally, you have to, you know, you have to get to the point where you're like, Costco. Yeah. There are going to be yeah. people. They're going to grab all your candy. You cannot lose yeah. your mind, and you just need to keep it moving, like through. You, and you realize people come in waves. Like all of a sudden there'll be nobody, and you'll be like, "Okay, we're fine. We can we can do this. We can we can we can handle this." And then all of a sudden it's like three hundred people within a minute and a half. <laughs> <Blind>. <laughs> uh, do you guys pass out candy at your house? I I don't. Um, where I'm at, um, kind of up in the mountains, and then we don't you know we don't really get a lot of trick or treaters. Um, we always buy it and eat it, but we don't give a lot out. Here, let's see if we can see. This is, eh, I can't focus it really well. But anyways, it's like paper cones. Like they kind of are the shape of like an ice cream cone. Oh. And I'll look together with a raven in there. See if I can, eh, it's not oh. really working. You know, send that but, on uh, Twitter. Okay, I'll, I'll do that right now. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it's massive. And so, but that's the one that he said he can keep, I can keep up year round. And then when we're talking about olive eyes, I just posted up um, olive eyes um, on money meat meatloaf. So you can see what you can do with just all um, ice or all the slices. Now, I think well, I've seen, you posted that I before. You take um, meatloaf and they'll make it into the shape of a ham. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And I think well, this is, I use, I use, yeah, I use meatballs and I just use, got one of those crescent sheets, simple and easy, and just cut it in strips, wrapped it around and cut up little eyes and put some, um, catch up in the middle of them. So just simple and fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, if anyone has any questions in the chat room, uh, feel free to ask us any questions you have about Halloween recipes. Uh, we've already talked about cocktails. We're already talking about decorations. Um, I would love to talk about some main entrees. If you're going to have a party or you want it to be themed or you want it to be quirky is is it more like the name of the recipe? So you're like, this is the witch's brew. And then you, you like, you let your imagination, you're like, oh, it's spaghetti. You know, it's like intestine of, you know, man, you know, and here you, you know, you're going to serve spaghetti. Um, any kind of fun things that you can do with that stuff? Well, what I usually do is, is I think some of it can be just the name but it always helps to have something a little bit extra. So usually I use forbidden rice because it's black. And um, I try to do lots of green things. And actually, I think you can see this. Okay, that's my um, swamp gumbo with forbidden rice. And so actually you can see around the edges, it's extra green. You actually puree spinach and kale with some water to mix it in to give it this foamy green color. And I've been making some little crackers like that in the shape of ghosts and bones. And I think when you put those around, because uh -huh. I made some coffin loaves also. Um, but, but like so. Oh, coffin loaves. Oh, my God. Yeah. That must be so cute. And this is a soup with just like pumpernickel bats. And it's just potato <laughs> soup with, again, spinach. So you're, you're getting the bonus of getting them to eat what you want them to eat. And it's super cool. I'm going to try and find the coffin loaves. Or, and I've, oh. I've, I've taken like um, puff pastry. I'm going to post a link right now where I've made like made homemade puff pastry and I've just cut it up in bats and, and different shapes like that. And it just, you know, it adds. You can you can cook whatever you want that to go with the theme or to go with the flavors without having to figure out how to make it spooky and gross. Um, just by putting, like Kathy said, little bits of crackers or bread or something around there, and it just brings, it brings it all, it brings it all together. 
And then for home, my husband or my son always loves mummy meatloaf where I put the potatoes on top of the meatloaf um, and just pipe them out with a, a ribbon tip. Oh, that's um, and put little cute. olive eyes on there, things like that. Um, now, so, when, when you yeah. when you cook that, so basically the meatloaf is cooked and then the potato is cooked. Then do you, mm -hmm. do you put that in the oven? I put again? I put it under the broiler. So yeah, oh. so I make like a cupcake because you know he loves meatloaf cupcakes, mm -hmm. and so I make the meatloafs in the little cupcake pan, and then um, I put the the pipe the potatoes on top, and then broil it and just get it kind of crispy and brown. And so he likes that. We've also done, you know, like Kathy said, the black rice. They've done like squidding pasta before, different things like that. The you know black pastas, um, you know, just you know anything that I can think of. The mummy, the the meatloaf hands or feet. Those are really gross. <laughs> I've never seen. Um, I've never seen black rice like that. Like the whole package black. Usually you get like wild grain rice, but it's different colors and there's like a sliver of black somewhere. But the whole where do I get well, that? Like, like, like volcanic, rice. volcanic rice or something yeah. like that. There's different rices that have, um, yeah. The forbidden rice is actually a whole grain rice. Um, and it's called forbidden rice because I think only Chinese royalty could have it. And it's through a certain period of time, but it's really good for you. And it's not like sticky rice at all. It's almost almost like raw rice but not quite yeah, and, and you can see something that's called thai black rice but thai black rice is really purple it doesn't cook up black okay. and so that's what like, fun for halloween what'd you say danielle purple would be fun for halloween yeah purple rice i mean that's purple than cool. just about everything i make for halloween as far as my cookies <laughs> or any of my decorations we make beautiful halloween cookies here monica yeah oh. okay <laughs> There they are. So this dude I made on the fly um, for here because they wanted some Halloween cookies and they're glu it's gluten free. So it's just a really nice gluten free thing. Oh my gosh, so I, wanna, I, wanna those. I just want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I had to save some from my mom's partner and set them aside and he gets them after this show. <laughs> oh my oh. God. Wait, what's, what's, what's his name? His name is Greg. Greg. Greg so Thank you. And oh, those are so cute. <laughs> Got a oh, black one here somewhere. One. I saw one with the, with webs on it. Or did those all get eaten? Those all got eaten. Oh, those are really cute. But but that's simple. That's just like wet on wet icing. Right. So you, um, I do uh, not. I don't always like pipe it edge and then flood it. I just do kind of uh, a little looser and then shake it around a little bit so I don't have to go through all those steps and unless it's really needed. And so oh, I turned off my light. Here we go. Touch light. Um, and then. Um, and so I pipe a circle a wet on wet, and then I take another loose icing and just do concentric circles and move it with a toothpick. So it's simple, easy, really fast. You know, you do some pretty decorated ones like, you know, these guys and take your time on them and then just do a bunch of fast little circles and it's all done. Babette, are you eating candy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, I should have leave some. I had some black licorice cats I got from a candy store here in Oregon. Mm. I should have saved those, but I ate them all. Black licorice cats. Yum, yum, uh -huh. yum. Yeah, they were sugar free, so I could eat them. Okay, so we talked about cocktails. We talked about decorations. We talked about entrees. I would love to talk about leftover candy. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Because I have one recipe that I forgot where I found it, but it's like years and years and years, and it's like my go to res recipe because I get so many of these things. But the Jolly Ranchers, if you mm -hmm. add them to booze, mm -hmm. It's like a little flavor. It falls after a couple mm. days, yes. And for like, some reason, uh, everything yeah, I do yeah. goes back to booze. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay with that. But anything, what, what do I do with like all of these things? Like I'm, when I'm stuck with well, you know, like so 300 Snickers. Well, obviously are good in cookies and Rice Krispies treats, you know. Mm. Um, you could probably chop up the some of the candy bars and add them to a cheesecake. Oh, I've seen lots of barks where you do like oh. a, you know, a, a, I can't think of it, but like the almond bark barks, you know, with chocolate and stuff like that. And they put bits of candy on top of that and cut them up and, and, and stuff like that. You know, Mark. Yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say pumpkin seed. You can make it like a fall type um, mm -hmm. trail mix with the pumpkin seed. Oh, yeah, that's and perfect. And that's that was a good uh, tip from Mama Caruso one. Yeah. That sounds delicious. In fact, I'm going to come right over and get some of that if you have any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, no, we, I find that, um, I mean, I guess on cupcakes and things like that, that you could, you could do that. I mean, kids, I think kids are so overwhelmed with like just so many sweets. Um, I hate to disappoint them by giving like apples out because who really wants that? Um, any advice for uh, like when kids are coming around the neighborhood and they want to, this is, so we're going to back up a little bit. Um, so when kids come to the house, what do you guys serve them? Like when you're passing out candy, Cause especially with Kathy, with being a vegan, I'm sure you don't just go to Costco and buy it like bunches of candy or do you? No, there's some surf sweet candy you can get. Unfortunately, we don't get any kids. Mm. And so even that, cause we, had all of our blow up stuff outside and on the deck and all that. And, and because our dogs are a little nervy, we usually just leave out candy with a little note. Um, do they actually take only one piece and does it last all night? They don't take only one piece and it does last all night. Cause I go out a few times during the night. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, I you can know, hold this much trust. <laughs> yeah. You know, what would be funny is to put that on webcam. And to see like which kids and, and then leave like a hashtag that says like, um, uh, you know, trick or like a little, like maybe even like a little thing on the candy that says, uh, Hey mom, do you want to see how your child behaved during Halloween? Uh, go to www, blah, 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 blah. Uh, or check out the hashtag on Twitter and, uh, see the kids taking all the candy. <laughs> I could just imagine yeah, that. I'm, like, That's I'm my son. Jump. I'd rather watch the webcam and when I see someone taking too much, jump out and just scare the crap out of them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good too. But Beth, you should do that where you're saying 300 kids come through. Or oh do you think you just, you'll just lose everything at once? You chase them down the driveway. These, <laughs> come I've never, party. I've never seen anything like Toluca Lake where it is, in fact, when our, when our family moved there, the neighbors actually said, they go, um, we just want to prepare you. You have to get your house professionally decorated because uh, everyone gets it decorated, which I thought, how is that even possible? But they do. And they, they, it's like weeks ago, they've already started decorating. And then all of a sudden they're like, when you go buy your candy at Costco, you have to buy over 3000 pieces of candy. Whoa. And, yeah, the and Daniel's Whoa. right. Yeah. Danielle's right. They do. A lot of the places have like the full size candy bars. Not and even full size. We're talking the mega huge things. Yeah, and I was like, that's impossible. Three thousand pieces of candy. <laughs> All oh. I know is well, I said. You're living in Chaluka Lake. Come on, you've got. Yeah, uh, so yeah I, don't, I don't know the area, so <laughs> yeah. it's like the Beverly. Yeah, it's like the Beverly Hills of Beverly Hills. Like it's ridiculous. Um, it, and it's like it's it's it, the homes are beautiful and it's pretty amazing. But it's they do ship people in. Like I've seen people who I mean, like fifty people to a family be walking down the street, and I'm like, who, who are all these people? And they're all related. Like the whole group is together because that you see them come in a group. Um, but I recently sent my mom to Costco to get some stuff for Tech Munch. We just produced our food blogger conference uh, in LA about a week and a half ago, which was awesome. Danielle was amazing. She was very oh, helpful. Um, yeah, but uh, what did you say? Was it my pleasure? <laughs> oh, but my pleasure. Um, but it was uh, it was ridiculous. She said she went there and she could not find any candy. And I'm like, it's almost Halloween. How do you not find candy? And she's like, I don't know where the candy is. It's just there's no candy here. So I think that's what happened. I think people in Toluca Lake went to Costco. Oh, she went to the one in Burbank? Yes. So they bought like their 3,000 pieces of candy. And uh, now everyone is like getting well, prepared. Have, okay. The smart hmm? final was just down the street. She should have gone there. You know, for the other stuff, waters and stuff, you, you it's almost like it's better Costco because Costco has the little, the little, um, for the conference, the little, because oh, I the find that, yeah. yeah, if we give big things of water, people will leave half drink, uh, everywhere. consumed bottles everywhere. If you give them small ones, for some reason, it's like, it's just enough to get people, uh, something to drink. And then they, then they throw them away. I don't know why that is because maybe because they're so small, they just feel like, oh, it's cute and they'll put them away. But anyways, I digress. Okay. So we have about 15 minutes left for the show. Um, what are you guys going to be doing? I know Kathy, what you're doing for Halloween. Uh, Danielle, what are you doing for Halloween? I haven't decided yet. Um, we were just talking at work about whether or not we were going to dress up and um, I just might wear this. 
<laughs> there you go. On that Friday, um, I can't wear anything too scary because it's all a bunch of you know little kids, three years and younger, to come into work. But um, you know, if there's a party around, otherwise I'll just you know hand out some candy. When the kids were little, I would dress up with them and take them oh. um, trick or treating. And this one year, I dressed up as a guy. <laughs> and I took my hair back and put it in a ponytail, and um, you know, got my eyeliner out and did the you know goatee and the mustache and everything, and put on a suit and a tie. And the neighbor across the street asked my daughter if I was her uncle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. And then afterwards, we went to a friend's party, and um, my husband was there, and I decided to really kind of mess with him, and I was flirting with him. <laughs> but he was like so confused because I looked like a dude, but he knew who I was. But it was like. You know, just kind of a weird <laughs> mind thing for him. That's a way to challenge your husband's masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he obviously knew who I was, but it was like, I don't know. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. 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 We should definitely say hello to everyone who's just tuned in. Juliet Haran, 93. Hello and happy Halloween. Um, hello. Also, uh, Faux So Social also said, hello, ladies. What's up? And the Mama Cruz is still here, and we got a few other folks as well that have chimed in. Um, we are talking Halloween recipes. We probably have about 15 minutes left to our show. This is a show called The Cookbook Club, and basically every week we cover a different topic, and we make a community cookbook based on that uh, topic. So if you have a recipe you'd like to share, I'm going to post the link to it. Whose phone is going off? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> is it Cheryl's? You can Cheryl. also... Uh, incorporate um, Halloween into your costume. So oh. I did a Halloween, and, and I'm trying to post it right now, and so the link will be up shortly. And I did um, Sweeney Todd, the wife. Oh. And so I had the whole costume on, and then I made a little mini pie and put crab apples in it and carved the eyes, you know, like you can do the apples with the cloves to make the eyes. I did it with crab apples and put that into a pie and cut it open so that they showed when the when it was baked. And then I made um, little fruit pies, just little fruit pies like that. And I um, baked them and then once they were cool, I cut them open and put gummy body part cup or body parts in there and then put a little jam around it and had that all in a big basket with like the, the red stripe and all the logo stuff from Sweeney Todd. And then just carried that around with my costume. Oh, and the, yeah, it was so much fun. The hardest part was everybody knows me in town as a baker and they're like, Oh, I want to eat those. And I had to slap people's hands left and right because otherwise <laughs> my costume would be gone before the contest happened. And so everybody wanted to eat them. And so I'm like, yo, after the contest, you all can have these that have been walking around in the air all day long, but that's fine. And so you can, you can incorporate food into fun, you know, into your costume. I mean, I love to bake and I love Halloween. So it just kind of all came together. And then here is also Halloween for breakfast. So, yeah. so these are cup or these are pancakes. Oh, oh. so I just took cookie cutters and the key is heating it really slow and making a very thin um, pancake. And if you do it really slow, then you don't get any browning. So I just put it in a piping bag and, you know, put some of my cookie cutters down and grease them and then just put that on the, on the cast iron skillet and cooked them that way. Okay. That is delicious. First of all, Kathy, you need to incorporate that into a morning after your party event idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you should have like two parties and be like, are you, are you tough enough to handle not one, <laughs> but two Halloween events? I think that, I think you should do that. We'll we'll see. We do have maybe one friend who's not allowed to bring the cocktail anymore. Oh, oh! You gotta tell that story. <laughs> well, what happens is I I like to kind of danger cook for parties. So there's I always say one or two dishes to like right before everybody comes to make. And so the first thing I do after that is I grab whoever brought the cocktail and start drinking the cocktail, and it was really strong. <laughs> And I started drinking at probably 5.30, and our party goes till midnight. So it was kind of rough. I was not the only one who was a little bit, like, it, it was a call by all. Because I we usually have between 13 and 16 people. So it was unanimous. Is it a potluck at all? So you, you ask people to bring stuff, too? It, it has been an, I call it an enforced potluck. 
Because if you're if you've been coming for a lot of years, you can make whatever. You can say, I want to make dessert. I know you know what we're talking about, and there will be no kitty litter cake. But if you're new, I have to approve what you might want to bring. <laughs> that makes sense because you don't always want it like kitschy. You know, if you want something classy, and that's the theme. Well, and some people seriously just don't know, and they're scared to ask. And this way, we have a conversation. I have a whole page of like links to cool recipes and where they can see cool food photos to get an idea. And if they know something they want to make, but they're not sure how to make it, we can make it together. So it's not like I'm super mean. This year, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of actually doing all the cooking myself and just letting other people. Um, I don't know if you guys know Jenny Field from Pastry Chef Online. She's awesome. And so she's going to actually do the dessert. I think I do. I think I do. I, for some reason, it's funny because sometimes you you see people's uh, avatars or you see their name, how it's spelled, that you realize, oh, oh I do know this person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find this really cool email I got. Today. I got so much stuff with um, Halloween, but I cannot find this email. It was like a um, they had taken the, the egg, you know, like what are those egg things called? Where you basically um, you take the egg, then you take the yolk, and then you whip it up, and then you put something else. What are those? They're like traditional. Deviled, egg, deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Oh, I make deviled potatoes. I actually put up a link for my deviled potatoes. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Here, it's it's kind of the same idea. Here we go. Are they small potatoes? So like little. Yeah. And these are little purple potatoes. Cool. That you can oh, those use. are cute. Um, so how'd you really make cute. them black? Um, they're actually those little purple Peruvian potatoes, but well, they're not really that variety, but they're little round purple potatoes that are baby. And then I just make a tofu salad. So um, if you just mush up tofu with a little bit of vegan mayonnaise, some mustard, just like you make egg salad. The only trick is to use um, black salt, or it's called kala namak, is the Indian name. And it's a high sulfur salt, which sounds gross until you realize it makes it taste just like eggs. And it really does. Oh, it tastes yeah, like exactly. eggs. So, and then, but you could put chickpea salad. You could really stuff it with anything you wanted. But it's, it's a riff on deviled eggs. You know, we did get a question in the chat room for H... Nabis, uh, good wine, question mark. So any good wine for Halloween? Yes. Um, why can't I think of it right now? I've got it here. I think I have a bottle over here. Let's say start with maybe something red. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so, you know the problem yeah. for me with red wine is it makes my teeth like, like I look crazy. <laughs> I know, you look okay. You know what's a trick? There's a trick. Okay, first they say, don't brush your teeth just before you drink wine. And then drink water in between your sips to help mm -hmm. rinse. That also feels oh, like, oh, really cool that's bottle. a cool Phantom, bottle. Nice. That is so neat. It's a nice wine. Um, it only comes out around the holiday time. It's a bogle wine. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's always really delicious. I've been drinking it for a number of years. You have like to be... Oh, go ahead. I just say I like the Bogle Pizza Syrah, so my family just had that the other day. So this is like an old vine Zinfandel. So I mean, it, it's a decent wine. You have to be careful about not getting too taken in by just the Halloween wines, though, because I do, and I'll try anything <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> and so sometimes it's worth a try, and then sometimes it's like, oh my god, I shouldn't have spent a dollar on this. This is disgusting. You know. Somebody, a, a vineyard a vineyard should do a thing that says trick or treat on the label and basically it's like it could be a treat the nice wine but it could be a trick and like you don't that. know i would and totally like, buy that i would buy a case of that there, there's another <laughs> wine that's called poison poi zen oh. z e n uh -huh. and it's also oh. another zinfandel and they have a white wine that's called anecdote or no oh. yeah an no anecdote or goat the cure for the poison. It's oh, it's oh, late sorry. at my time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we have a question. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. I think it's it got answered, huh? Well, about dry oh. ice. Yes, dry ice. Yeah, Anna, uh, Mama Caruso wanted to know any recipes that incorporate dry ice or something that in incites spooky. <laughs> 
I would put it under something. I wouldn't put it in a drink since I keep reading about people like having their stomach removed from drinking it at bars and stuff. So I'm not savvy enough to try and do it. Um, but it is cool. As, <laughs> if, I know. I was like, no, thank you. I, I, I was put think, it in a bowl and then maybe put yeah. it like a strainer over it so it can't, you know, just like one of those steamers that you put in. Professionals just put one upside down in the punch bowl to keep the dry ice down there. So no one's scooping it up. I think that's a great idea. We have a fog machine, of course. Oh, and, this <laughs> and of course, your glow in the dark or dry light. Um, no, what was it? The dry, uh, the, yeah, the black the, light with the tonic okay, water. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah. I'll just finish it. yeah, that's the one I can't tell. It. The <laughs> tonic water would be safer than dry ice. And it's still right, that, right, right, right. That There's that one yeah. for the spooky. Well, I think with cocktails and spooky, if we're looking at that too, like if you have some sort of. Um, thick cherry syrup or red syrup that you can dip your glass in and then have a little blood come down. Oh, that's cool. You can get um, black and green margarita salt usually around this time of the oh. year. Like um, World Market often has some stuff like that. And for the vegans and vegetarians, they actually have some Halloween pasta that is regular pumpkin and instead of it being squid ink, it's actually black carrot. So there's some black oh, in there. Oh, okay. and, then, yeah. Yeah. Cool. and then more people can more people can eat it too. That's awesome. Right. Oh, if someone has a seafood allergy. Everything you can add that you can add that to like pasta to make the pasta black for um lasagna and stuff like that. Oh, this just already has black carrot. So I'm assuming it's carrot um, that's pureed. Um, you, if you're not afraid of any of the artificial colors, you can totally put like a little bit of black dye or red dye in something. Um, you can make pasta with beet too. So I'm a big proponent of using beets and I actually make a hot chocolate that's real thick that I put beets and let it cook to get red and then add some beet powder. You don't taste the beet, but then it just looks slightly bloody, which Ooh, is kind of cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm sorry, I have to eat chocolate. You guys are making me <laughs> so hungry. Mm, mm, mm. I don't have any candy at I just ate a Milky Way. <laughs> Do you What's think your favorite candy bar? My favorite? Mm -hmm. See, when I tell you it's going to be. Well, actually, you know, I like score. Okay. I like that kind of toffee thing. I do like Carmelo. I like anything with caramel. And unfortunately, I love marshmallows. <laughs> and I'm a vegetarian. And it is the worst thing. It's like a struggle that I have every time. Because I'm like, Babette, this is not vegetarian. What are you doing? But it's, I, I, I don't know. I got I got it. But I'm going to do the vegan marshmallows you gotta I, try dandy dandies are awesome and I, I would be straight up with you too i probably because yeah. uh, um cheryl is not a vegan and and a lot of my friends aren't so i'm real upfront with what only i will like and what everyone will like like vegan sausage people like sausage because it tastes good with the spices nobody cares what's in it that's why you have chicken and turkey sausage you know <laughs> <laughs> you know vegan butter is delicious. I don't know what they put in that stuff. That. It is, we, I went, um, I think it was, uh, oh gosh, I want to say natural, what is balance. it that, is it natural balance? Nature, no, nature natural. Balance. Earth balance? Nature, earth, balance. Earth, balance. Earth, earth balance. Earth balance. Okay. Uh -huh. It's good. I was at Burning Man with Healthy Voyager and she broke out this giant, like, bin of that butter and i was like oh no the vegan butter because i've had vegan cheese and i hate it i hate it i well, hate it i hate it and, and make sure to know that you hate some kinds have you had yeah. yoko's cheese yet i don't think so. it's a it's a totally different animal it's aged it's amazing mm. and if you can try chow c-h-a-o which is by field roast that's a good cheese you can eat cold a lot of the other ones are really crappy. So I'm not arguing with you about you shouldn't not like the ones that you don't like, but that there it's like this whole new age of vegan cheese right now. And there's like four or five different artisanal cheese makers in the country that are mm. aging all their cheeses. I think we should have a vegan cheese show. 
we should do that soon. Awesome. That would yeah, be we great. We should do like a dietary restriction type show, whether it's, you know. Uh, yeah. We, we should we should figure some stuff out. So we have about two minutes. For the new year. For the new Ooh. year, we can do that. Yeah. So Let's, um, um, yeah, that fit for the new year for sure. Dairy, uh -huh. you know, not yep. just intolerant, gluten free. We have two minutes left to the show. Alcohol free. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we Good, point. Like Good point. Good point. You know, like non -proc unprocessed foods. Mm -hmm. That's true. Is, is it okay for me to give out a coupon code for my book? Would that be oh, sure. acceptable? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to get it too. Okay, and I'll put is the code and then I'll put the link too. So for those of you who are tuning in, I just took a bite of chocolate again. For those of you who are tuning in, you're watching the Cookbook Club. We are Bakespace.com members. I'm actually the founder of Bakespace, and we have a special guest today, Kathy Hester, who is a cookbook author who just got done doing a ebook on vegan Halloween recipes. So that's what she's going to share. She just shared the link to that and also the code for the coupon as well. So make sure you guys check that out as well. And then this will be on replay in a little bit. So if you came in late, we had a lot of great recipes, a lot of great tips that we shared early on. We're also making a community cookbook. So I'm going to share the link to the community cookbook again. Um, oh, uh, uh, I was just telling, let's see, what is, what is your first name? Oh, I don't have, there's no first name here. I'm going to follow you though. You said that your husband, oh, Fiona. Yeah. Fionicia Hudson, I think, is her last name, her first name, which is really cool. Um, she was just telling her husband she needs to write a cookbook. Cool. Well, you should, if you want to write a digital cookbook, you can also do it at Bakespace.com. We have a cookbook publishing platform as well. Kathy, what did you Great. use to publish your cookbook? Um, I used a friend who just did it in InDesign. So it's a PDF, but it can be read on iBooks, Kindle, any, really any software at all. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Now, but that with your books, do you, do you do they come as a Mobi where you can sell them on Amazon as well, or? You know, we we have them so that they sort of live within our platform. The uh, it makes a web based version of it, and then it locks all the recipes. So for in order for them to unlock the recipes, they have to either if it's a free cookbook, they can download it, or we can make it unlocked so it's available to everyone or you can charge for it. And if you charge for it, people have to pay through the website and then you get notified of um, all the sales and then it unlocks it for that user. And then also through our app too. So Cookbook Cafe in iTunes is also um, where, we, where we publish it too. So it becomes an iPad app uh, through our platform, which has a really cool search feature. So, you know, the hardest yeah. part about getting um, recognized when you're a cookbook author is like once I do publish it, like how do people how do people find me? And it's like unless you're optimized on Amazon for that search term. Um, but we we optimize all of our all the recipes within the cookbook. So if someone's looking for egg rolls and you have a cookbook that has 20 recipes, but one of them's egg roll or has egg rolls in them, that cookbook will come up through that search. So it's I contextual. Not through Amazon. We don't do it through no, Amazon, Amazon yet. Amazon. Okay, but so I think. Do they have a, yes. are they going to do a, a mobile friendly version? Uh, you, we are going to actually do a redesign and we're going to make it all responsive. So it'll even be better than the cookbook app. It'll be all responsive for the web. Got it first oh, that's year. Cool. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we're in the process of a, rede a major redesign, Sweet. really focusing on the cookbooks. Um, which we're really excited because we've got a lot of feedback from a lot of our authors, uh, but we're super excited about that. Oh, let me share the link to the folks who just pulled in. Um, if you want to share a Halloween recipe, share a, yeah, let me write this down, Halloween recipe, you can add your recipe to our community cookbook and then we'll publish it. And in this chat, I will publish the link to the final cookbook and it's a free cookbook. It's available for all of our members. There's nobody charges for it. Um, so if you share your recipe, we don't own the copyright to it or anything like that. So you're you're free to upload a recipe you have like published on the web somewhere else. It does not have to be exclusive to our uh, community. It's more about as a group, we're making a cookbook together based on whatever the show topic is. So maybe Kathy, you'll you'll give us one recipe. Absolutely. I even have cool. a new one on the blog. Cool. Yeah, I'd love oh, to. Yeah. 
That'd be cool. And you can link back to your blog too. You, uh, within the recipe, it'll say like who's the original author, you know, uh, and then you can add the original URL as the as well to the um, to the recipe. So, so guys, awesome. I think we should. I think we should. Oh. You have the link for last week's cookbook. Yes. Oh, you know what? I have not published that yet, but I had the, oh, okay. the squash recipe. I'm about to publish no, the, no, bread the bread cookbook. one. Yeah. Yeah, the bread one. I'm almost okay. done with that one. Um, I'm going to. Now, Danielle, did you put any of the bread recipes in the chat link? Probably. So I'll have to go through those and I'll have to add those to Sorry. the cookbook. <laughs> well, that's okay. No, no. That, don't worry about that. I'll totally do that. Um, uh, next week's show is, I think, Thanksgiving recipes. Let me just check. Already? I know. Oh, boy. It's, no, but we're, I think we're doing it a little bit earlier. So just so that people have enough time to, um, I have oh, yeah. to look to see. And also I'll, I'll add in this chat, the link for our next shows. Um, if you go to my profile, you'll be able to see like upcoming what, what we're doing. So you can subscribe oh, okay. to all of our shows too. Um, I would love for people to know where to find you guys on the web. So as they're watching the show, uh, why don't we start with Monica? Where can people find you on the web? You can find me anything with The Moon Muse. Go to themoonmuse.com and there's links to it all. Instagram, The Moon Muse, Facebook, The Moon Muse. It's, it's all synced. Except for Bake Space, it still says Akmani. We're going to change that. <laughs> We're going to change that. <laughs> it's AK Money, but to you all, it's oh, that's right. Because <laughs> I was like, AK, what does that stand for? It stands for Alaska, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And now it's in my head. Thank you very much. And in our chat over here, I put a lot of links to my blog that had different Halloween stuff. So you cool. can just click on one of those and find me that way too. Awesome. So uh, Danielle, do you want to tell folks where they can find you? Let's see. For my blog, it's peacefulcooking.blogspot.com. Bake space. It's unstuffed. Then you go to uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's all peaceful cooking. Cool. And we'll, we'll change the bake space one too. Yeah. And I need to somehow get it changed in this blog lab thing because it still you, says that I'm stuffed. You know what I think you can do? I think you can create a new account if you log in through Twitter again, maybe. Probably, but then I'll, I'll, I'll apologize to all the follow people that I followed that I don't follow anymore when I change into a new account. <laughs> I'll Maybe uh, <laughs> take a screenshot of them so you can go back and look for them too. Yeah, just yeah, in yeah, case. That's a good idea. That might okay. be the easiest. That might be the easiest way. So, Kathy, where can folks find you online? You can find me at healthyslowcooking.com, and I've got the veganhalloweencookbook.com also that has some vegan Halloween recipes, and we're putting up some decorating tips and things like that there. Um, it's healthy, slow cooking most places on Twitter and Instagram. It's Geeky Poet because I was never going to use them for anything but personal. <laughs> I have no personal anything. So. Kathy, I was like today I was going through and I was looking for your Twitter handle and I was like, is that her Twitter handle? I'm like, it has to be. There's no other way around it. So I was surprised. I was like, this isn't, I'm confused, but I'll, I'm just going to go with it. I'm working on branding this year. Or I guess next year is when I'm working on branding. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We do have a show next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Please subscribe to our channel here. I think if you click on my profile, you'll be able to see all the shows that we have upcoming. I think I have the next three shows listed. So it's every Tuesday, same time. I think we're doing Thanksgiving recipes. And then I think we're doing uh, pie recipes and then for thanksgiving so some maybe some savory stuff and then also um i think we're going to do cocktails and wine pairing as well i think that would be kind of cool as we're getting into the holidays of like what i'm making turkey like what kind of wine should i serve like ah help me um i am babette pepi i'm the founder of bakespace.com uh please go check out bakespace.com when you can if you'd like to make a cookbook you can do that there. We would love to help promote your um, your recipes, and we appreciate you guys and your time for watching the show. And we will see you guys on Tuesday. Cheers. Bye, guys. <laughs>